Hello, and welcome to this new series on using the new Blender for video editing. As you may know, I've got a long-running series on doing video editing for Blender version 2.79, um, but when Blender Foundation released 2.8 in 2019, they changed a lot of things, including a massive revamp to the user interface. So the idea behind this new series is that it'll be an add-on to what I've already uh, presented for my 2.79 series. Uh, in, in those videos, I take a long time to uh, explain in detail how you can do certain things. Uh, and then my goal here is that you can watch those videos and then when there are things that are different enough in the new version of Blender, then you can come to these videos and see exactly how things differ and apply them here to the new versions of Blender. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about general user interface differences, uh, starting with uh, the very first screen you see when you open Blender for the first time. So as you can see here, uh, I just downloaded this version. It's 2.90.1. Uh, and you're presented with this quick setup where you can choose language, shortcuts, uh, and what you want to use, which mouse button you want to use when you do selections. Now, shortcuts, the default is Blender, and you, the other options are uh, Blender 2.7x. So clicking on that, then you would get the usual things like pressing Alt-A to toggle playback on and off. Shortcut in the new Blender is just the spacebar. So uh, that's a good option to pick. Now as for what you select with, um, if you're used to Blender 2.79, you know, feel free to choose, go with the right sele selection and then everything else will work the same. I'm going to do that, but for now, I'm going to choose left just so I can show you how you can switch that around if you initially chose left, but then you want to go back to right. Um, oh, and then here's that spacebar option. So by default, um, spacebar will be for play. And then there's the theme, which Blender Dark works fine for me. So I'll just hit next. And at this point, once you've gone through that uh, first screen and that, that window won't show up again uh, the next time you run, this is the screen you'll see going forward when you open up Blender. And it's pretty handy because right down here, it uh, gives you the option for creating a new file. And then you can choose what kind of project you're working on. In our case, we're doing video editing. So we just click video editing and right away, it takes us to, well, maybe I need to double click. No, there we go. <laughs> just took a little bit of time. Um, it takes us to the screen layout for video editing. And this is what we're presented with. It, it is quite different uh, from the 2.79. Uh, okay, but uh, in general, you can still kind of feel your way around this. Like right here, we have uh, the sequencer right here. Um, and now because I chose uh, left mouse as the selection, that means in order to try to move the time cursor, which is now a blue instead of a green line, I have two options. I can either left click on here and then drag it around to move that line around, or I can hold down on the shift key and then click with my right mouse button. And that lets me jump around to a horse or scrub. Um, but uh, I decided after uh, like half an hour, not even half an hour of, of using left mouse button that I, I didn't like it. Uh, so right now I'm going to show you how to change it back to right mouse button for selection. You go to the edit menu and down to preferences. And then from here, we will go to this option here, key map. And then here, here it is. Here's the option right here. So right now it's on left. I'm just going to click right and, and that's it. And then now I can close that. And now, now when I click with my left mouse button, then that lets me drag, move thing, move around on the timeline. Okay, so now let's talk about in general what's different. Um, starting with the screen layout selection. So before our screen layouts were around in this area, and they still are. So you can see we, but we've only got two options right now. 
it starts with the default video editing and then you can left click to choose rendering you can click this button to add a new workspace which lets you do other things and allows you to make copies in that sense so i can if i want to like you know, i don't want to have this um this file browser i can change this to something else i can change i can click on here and uh, let's say I want to bring this back to the graph editor. But that's the normal thing that's in the top left corner. So I click graph, graph editor. There we go. I've got that. As you can see, I can just left click and uh, adjust the, the size of these different areas as I please. That hasn't changed. Um, and then from then on, uh, I can, and then, and that's my customized video editing screen layout then. I can always go back to this one and it'll be the same as before. And I think I can just double click on that. Yeah, I can double click on that and I can, I can say that this is my, I can name it something else, like uh, custom video sequence editor layout, something like that. Okay, so that's one, that's uh, some of the differences right off the bat. And, and there are good differences. The other nice thing too, is right down here, there is a new uh, row down here that, that tells you what is going to happen when you do when you use your left mouse button or your mo right mouse button within a certain uh, editor. So for example, over here, it's show showing here that you can see there it says with my left mouse button, if I click, then I'll change the frame. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm changing my frame position. Uh, my middle mouse button is for panning, for scrolling around. Uh, my rightmost button to select, or it also has this other thing where it's showing when you click on your rightmost button and then move the mouse, then you're doing a box select. So you can select multiple things. You don't have to push the B button anymore to do that. That's really nice. That's really a nice feature. And you can see as I move between these different uh, editors, these different areas on my screen, it changes. So that is a fantastic addition. Okay, so what else? The other thing I noticed is that um, when it comes to adjusting your screen layout to just so that it looks exactly the way you like, so you can work nicely, uh, before they used to have these three lines in the top right corner of all the different regions. And that was something you could use to kind of click and drag to bring out and start up, a, open up a new area to have an editor in. That feature still exists, but it's hard to see. In fact, like right over here, if you go, as you can see, my mouse cursor has now changed to this crosshair. And if I left click and bring it over, there it is right there. So the feature of being able to go to the corner and drag out a new region, it's still there, but, but it's all hidden away now. Um, but other things are still the same. Like if I, if I put the mouse right in between the border, it'll change to the double-headed arrow, which I can, and I can right-click and then choose to do splits, or I can choose to join the areas. So I can join this area back to here, and that's how you would get back to having a single uh, area there. So that part is still the same. Some other things that I've noticed is with dealing with the strip properties. So for example, let's, uh, let's right-click on here, and this is our audio strip. And I can tell it's the audio strip because now they have the icon to indicate what kind of uh, strip you're looking at is much easier to understand. And so the icon for the strip is right here and you can see that by the, the note symbols that's a uh, sound. And if I click to select the video and then you can see the, usual, the typical video icon. <clears throat> now within that, let me raise this up so we can see this a little more easily. Uh, some things that are different here is that um, the the way that they present these different options and properties has changed. So in 2.79, uh, for image offset and image crop, uh, there wasn't this little button to expand out. As soon as you clicked the option to enable image offset, then right away it would show you the X and Y offset um, fields so that you can make those changes. But in this new version, you have to op open it up by clicking on that little arrow so it expands out and then you can make your adjustments in here. And that part still works the same as usual. 
So for example, uh, what I can do is I can I can type in a value, like I can say 50 and that'll shift it over, or I can left click and then drag the mouse back and forth. So that part hasn't changed, but the fact that uh, you have to click this to even see it, that's definitely new. And some of the other properties are, are like that too, where they've kind of shifted things around. So, But once you get used to it, then it's fine. So, so far, I've, I have seen that everything I was expecting to find in, in Blender is there, just the way to get to it is a bit different. Okay, so that's it for this video. So in the next few videos, uh, I'll be showing how to do some things like uh, creating the borders and especially rendering out. So saving, uh, exporting your work as a video file. That'll be a new video on its own coming out soon. Okay, so thanks. I hope you liked that. If you did, please do give it a like and subscribe so you can get notified when the next video comes up. Bye now.